Welcome back to the shop. In our last few episodes, we're going over how to S4S lumber, which for those of you that don't know, is surface four sides. It's where you take rough sawn lumber and you join it, plane it, and uh, put a straight edge on it so you got nice 90 degree ends all the way around. That way you can use higher quality lumber at a lesser cost than buying it pre-milled. And you can go ahead and cut those defects out yourself. So if you wanna check that out, go ahead and check out this video here and you can learn how to do that yourself. Today, what we're gonna be going over is how to glue up a panel using those same boards that we did in that last episode. So we got our boards here, and this here is some eight quarter walnut that we already S4S'd up, and most of the defects have been cut out. Now, unfortunately on this board, we did have a little bit of an accident with some planer snipe. Luckily, we can just put that on the bottom, so that way it'll be hidden, because we're just gonna wrap it around with a miter board or anyways, so you won't be able to see it unless you look underneath. Uh, some things that you're gonna need is clamps, obviously. Personally, I do like the uh, standard pipe clamps. Can't say I'm a big fan of this brand because they got this little rubber pad that falls off and then you only got this short little nub to hold on to. I personally like the blue Irwins because you don't got to deal with that. I also uh, prefer the black galvanized pipe, which we don't have here, because this tends to get a little scarred up and then this gets all stuck, so you got to hit it with a hammer or your nearest object and usually it breaks free. Other styles of clamps are going to be uh, these parallel jaw clamps, uh, Bessie's probably the most well known. They're nice, but you gotta be more careful with getting like glue and stuff inside these little tracks because that's what this grabs hold of. And once that gets all fouled up, it's, it's such small little grooves that it's very difficult to clean out. So I really try to avoid using this, but there is certain instances that it's very useful. Like say your live edge is uh, too much of an angle. We've run into that a few times. Oh yeah. Your clamp on top, clamp beneath, depending on which side you're on has a hard time grabbing it, the clamp just slips off. That's sometimes when we're intermingle the uh, parallel jaw clamp because you got a lot more surface area. We also need some calls. You know, some people uh, have kits out there. I think Rockler is one of them. And they're made of wood. I personally don't like using wood because when you really got to pull some together, wood flexes. So what I like to use is just a good old fashioned, I'll let you hold on to this, Jake. That is a two by two steel oh, I mean, bar no, with, heavy. I think, eighth inch walls and that just will not move. No matter what you do to it, it pulls it flat. Uh, you'll also need, if you're using calls and it's not one of those pre-made kits, just some smaller clamps. You know, it doesn't have to be this style, you know, where the slidey thing and the twisty knob over here. You could use your regular squeeze clamps. I prefer these, you can get better force on it. And they slip right in. Oh yeah. So when you got, you know, obviously a call above and below, you know, you just slip one in and you can clamp down like this. I usually make a good habit of not clamping it this side up, so when you trip and fall, you're not smacking your face on it. Yeah. Ask me how I know that. You're also gonna need uh, an adhesive of some sort. You guys at home, probably everybody's got a thing of type on too around. It's probably the best wood glue out there. For walnut, nothing wrong with that. For your other exotics out there, you get more oils and waxes that'll tend to make the PBA glues not really adhere very well. You can always wash it down with some acetone, alcohol, cleans up the oils. But in this shop, we like to use epoxy-based adhesive. You gotta mix it up, so that's why I got a mixing container here, a couple different sticks, because it's so thick, sometimes they break. And this sticks to epoxy. So when you're working with boards, and you got all your epoxy, and you're gluing up, this stuff works, Typon does not. I believe a wise man once told me that PBA glues work by pushing their way into the pores of the wood, and then adhering, where obviously there's no pores in plastic, so. This, being epoxy-based, pretty much glues to anything. Also, you're gonna need some gloves. <clears throat> yeah, you're gonna wanna double glove it for this stuff. Uh, when your hands get all filthy, and then you, they get all nice and sweaty inside these gloves, it's easier to just peel one layer off and keep on working than to peel it all off and try to get, if you're wasting time, this stuff is time sensitive. Would you say more time sensitive than that? Actually, I mean, no, really... this is, you got like a, maybe 15 minutes of play. Okay. You know, it varies humidity, temperature, everything like that, where this is kind of, Temperature does affect it, but I'd say what, you got a solid 25, 30 minutes before you're in the, the oh crap moment. Yeah, so make sure you have everything prepped and ready before you start mixing. Oh, we used to not, what is this? Nitrile. Nitrile. I can't use latex. Why is that, Dave? We don't talk about that here. We won't talk about that here. So uh, let's I don't go think, ahead. I don't think they make sheepskin gloves. You can look. We went ahead and got our table ready. Uh, you could have used saw horses in your garage. We're actually using our calls 
as the piece is picking it up off the table, so then we have space for our clamps to slide up underneath. Jake, you can go ahead and show them what the call is. Yeah, yeah, so we're just gonna have these to where they line up. Uh, it's basically gonna sandwich the wood and uh, keep it flat. I'll keep it from going, you know, all crazy on you. And that's where the clamps come in, you'll see that. Now, because we did take the time to joint these boards, they're gonna be pretty flat. Now, if you only had a planer at the house, then they may have just followed the curve. So that's what calls are definitely good at is pulling those little bit of humps and keeping everything nice and even. So as we're putting these boards down, what we're looking out for is, in this instance, the sap wood, which is this lighter wood here. You can kind of see the cross section there. And that's the outer portion of the tree, the living portion. But uh, you know, people buy walnut for the nice, rich, dark wood. And this client wanted to keep that uninterrupted. So we're gonna keep an eye out for that as we go. So this right here is a good example of uh, why we use calls. Even though we did face joint all this lumber, you know, it did sit around for a couple days till we got back to it. Looks like some tension in the tree did release itself. No problem. We'll just make sure that the high point, which is conveniently right where we already had that, is going to be clamped just like that. So that'll that'll pull it down. But that's why we like the steel bars because it won't flex on you. All right. Now that we got the boards in the uh position that we want on. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the epoxy. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, 50-50. Uh, we saw double gloved here. Stuff works great. Oh, it's this way. Okay, so we have our A and we have our B. Use separate sticks. You don't wanna mix them up and then be double dipping like they did in Seinfeld. No double dipping. Okay, so, you know, that's two ounces. I'm gonna eyeball this. Uh, this stuff is pretty forgiving. I mean, you don't wanna be too off on your ratio. FGCI, um, if you could just try, try to make the bee smell a little better. Seriously, cameraman, you wanna smell this? All right, so you wanna make sure you scrape the sides. It's kind of like when uh, you're working with epoxy itself. Uh, like the tabletop, it's uh, really thick. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do the two bucket method with this like you would with the tabletop epoxy, but you do wanna make sure you scrape your sides, get your bottoms, get it mixed up real well. This is very much like taffy. Uh, pretty cool stuff. I'm just gonna work that together until it's mixed. Let's go see what Dave's up to. So while Jake's mixing that up over there, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little prep work for the glue joints. And I'm gonna start by just turning most of these up on edge, and I'm accomplishing two things doing that. One, presents a glue joint right on top, so it's easy to glue. I'm gonna leave this one flat because we're not putting glue there. That also allows me to wipe this down with some alcohol. Now it is black walnut, and that's a pretty good wood for gluing, so you don't normally have to do that, but I just like doing that as an extra step of precaution to make sure all these pores are nice and opened up and that epoxy gets to push its way in there. No reason to slam the jug. Oh, it, oh. Just a quick scrub down is all it really needs. Now I know I said I wasn't gonna put glue here, but I still wanna get that joint clean. Nobody likes a dirty joint. Your step is critical. So when you are turning these boards up on edge to make it a little bit easier to work on, make sure you're turning them all the same way because if you start turning one this way and one that way, I promise you, you're gonna forget which way you turn them. So the fact that I turned everything up like this, I could practically just smack this whole pile over and it's all laying in the right direction. So Jake here likes to use the, uh, what is that called, dude? A putty knife. A putty knife. <laughs> Never done tile. Uh, Jake likes to use the putty knife, but clearly he's taken too damn long. I personally prefer using a brush, uh, but he has a valid point that I can't use the brush to clean up the edges while he can. So now that we got the glue on the boards, we need to go ahead and get these things turned the correct direction, which is why we did it a certain way, and get it all squeezed together. Now at this point, because this is a catalyzed glue, you are kind of on a timer, so you got to get moving. What you f call these? Calls. Calls. <laughs> hey, hello. I just met you. Uh, I'm, well, uh, Dave's getting the clamps on there. I'm just kind of lining these up, the calls, and uh, that's where we'll come in. 
clamp them down at the same time so we keep a nice even squeeze. So as Jake just pointed out, currently we are putting all the clamps on top, but I like to do an over under method. What happens if you only clamp on one side is it's gonna kind of, if your clamps are on the bottom, it's gonna pull the board like this when you get a lot of pressure on it. If they're all on top, it's gonna go the other way, it's gonna peel up. So with top and bottom, you can balance that pressure and keep your board flat. So it's always good to take a straight edge and check your flatness of your panel. And you may have to like loosen up the top or tighten it up, something like that. All right, uh, which other ones do you want to use? Uh, let's go with the next shortest pipe clamps that are long enough. Check this out, this is really cool to see. So this right here is exactly what we were talking about using these calls to your advantage to pull these boards down. Uh, Jake, loosen up on your side a little bit. So you do gotta make sure you pull the call down even. And see, now you can see it moving. Because if you start pulling too hard on one side, then the call will kind of just pivot like this and then you're not squeezing the board anymore. So after you squeeze all together, obviously you get a lot of uh, squeeze out, as they call it. And it's just a good time to go in. And we like to just scrape most of it away because it saves you a lot of time after the glue up. Uh, if we were to leave that on there, it'd be harder than the wood. And then you got to sit there with the belt sander, flattening it out before you send it through any machines. Especially uh, your wide belt sanders and your uh, drum sanders. These ridges will just eat away at the, the paper. Dishes are done, man. As you can see, we did not, in fact, have our clamps pointed down because we didn't think about this, that uh, this table wasn't gonna let that happen. So that's it for today. We've done our glue up and we have to wait roughly seven to 14 hours, give or take, depending on the temperature for this to harden up. So when we come back in our next episode, we will be sending it through a drum sander and uh, making some edge pieces for it. So, uh, yeah, that's just just dab. No dabbing. No dabbing around this table. No dabbing or you get a stabbing. Yeah. Was there something up there? Oh, that was in the beginning. The video oh. was over there. Ignore that. There's nothing up there. My brain's fried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>